I kind of consider it a guilty pleasure, but I am a fan of the Saw series. I watched most of the original ones when they came out, one through seven, every year when they came out. I want to say the first one maybe came out a year or two ahead of time, but they got into a rhythm of releasing one every single year. And once that happened, I was a fan. Every Halloween, I was in there watching Saw movies. As a result, I've seen every Saw movie at least twice. And I say twice because I've seen the most recent one, Saw X, twice. The ones before that, I've seen, I think, all of them at least three times. And I kind of call it a guilty pleasure because the movies are very hit or miss. Some of them, the production values aren't particularly high, but I seem to enjoy every single one, at least to some extent. There's never been a Saw movie that I watched it and said that was terrible. All of them had at least something to offer, uh, I think, in revolving around the unique concept uh, surrounding them. I'm kind of happy to say that Saw X kind of snuck up on me. Before the trailer came out, I didn't even know they were doing a Saw X. Essentially, when I, the preview came out, I was gassed. Like, wow, they're making another Saw movie. I thought after Spiral, which I thought was pretty terrible, I thought the series was pretty much over. And it'd probably be left for dead. Because after Seven, which was the conclusion of the original kind of series and storyline, it took they took a long break. And then they came out with Jigsaw, uh, which kind of fit in a very interesting way into the continuity. And I like that one a fair amount. But then, they made, but then they made another one, Spiral, that was a totally different play. They brought in Chris Rock, who executive produced and starred in it. Seemed to go in a different direction. Didn't continue Jigsaw. And I thought it was maybe the worst Saw movie of all of them. And so I thought with that, the series was probably over. But it turns out that it wasn't. That given a few years, they're back with Saw X. And once again, like Saw, Jigsaw, and Spiral, they've kind of rebooted. And this one feels in particular like a reboot of the series. Like maybe they're going to try to start and go forward from here again. We'll see. But it was definitely another attempt at restarting the series, it seemed to me. So the trailer comes out. I do review the trailer. I thought the trailer was okay, but I wasn't particularly impressed. And I thought the trailer gave away a little bit too much about the movie. So I actually recommended people if they like the Saw series, just wait for the movie. Don't bother to watch the trailer. It's not going to blow your mind. It's just a, okay. It kind of looks and sounds like any other Saw movie. If you're not a Saw fan, you're probably not going to watch the 10th movie in the series off of that trailer. So that was my feeling coming out of the trailer. So pretty soon after the trailer came out, maybe a month or two, they started showing Saw X in uh, film festivals related to horror movies. And uh, who was it? Cody Leach and Sean Chandler both got a chance to watch it and I kind of follow their channels and they both really liked it. Neither said they were particular fans of the Saw series, but that they thought this could have been the best one. So at that point, I'm really gassed to see it. And then I finally got a chance to see it. And when I saw it, I was very disappointed. I didn't understand how Cody and Sean Chandler could have liked it that much. It seemed to me a below average Saw movie and I was kind of stunned that after four or five years since Spiral, this is what they came with. However, as chance would have it, I wasn't able to stay for the after credit scene. And so I have almost AMC passes so I can go see movies within reason as much as I want, you know, like three a week or something, which is far more than I ever do. So I wanted to see the after credit scene because who knows when I get a chance to actually see it on streaming because who knows where Sh Saw, Saw X is going to go to stream. So I went back to see it. But what I did was I didn't watch the whole thing again. I came in after a certain point where the stuff I like got good and I watched the rest of it. I'm glad I did because watching that, the majority of it, like two thirds of it again, helped give me a better appreciation for the movie. It helped me understand what I didn't like about it better. Now, before I go into reviewing it too much, I like to go over the pedigree of the screenwriters and directors involved with the movie. The screenwriters are a team of, of the team of Peter Goldfinger and Josh Stolberg. They're the same team that wrote Jigsaw and wrote Spiral. So I wasn't sure quite what to make of that. Jigsaw was very good. Spiral had good pieces, but it didn't quite come together and had a third act that I thought was perhaps the worst of the entire series. Interestingly enough, this team, or at least Josh Stolberg has, is an experienced screenwriter who got his break writing that comedy with Dane Cook, uh, Good Luck Chuck, which I actually mentioned in one of my How to Make Movies videos. So I thought that's a very interesting kind of a connection there. Uh, I like that. I kind of like that movie. A lot of people didn't thought it was terrible. So that's an interesting connection to that particular writer. The director is a man named Kevin Griutert. 
he also he directed Saw 6 and Saw 7, the two movies with the lowest production values of all the Saw movies. But he also was the editor on all the first five. So on the one hand, I thought five and six were, I'm sorry, six and seven both had their good parts, especially six. But I also thought the production values were low. So again, not quite sure what to make going to Saw X when these are your creators behind it. But one thing I'll point out here is that it looks like the Saw producers kind of keep the creators pretty close to the vest. They reuse the same directors, the same writers over and over again. They have a, a continuity that way. They don't jump a lot between different uh, writers and directors the way some movie franchises have, such as Mission Impossible up until the last, I think, two or three. I think the last two and then the next one all have the same writer director. Uh, but before that, every new Mission Impossible movie was a different writing and directing team with a little bit of overlap as far as writing, but not a whole lot. In discussing the story of a movie, I oftentimes like to talk about what I saw in the trailer as that gives you a pretty good idea of what you're likely to learn in the first act of a movie. Some trailers, unfortunately, have spoilers in them. But for me, in terms of learning about the story of a movie and the setup, usually trailers give you a pretty good idea of what movie you're seeing. So in Saw X, uh, Jigsaw, a serial killer played by Tobin Bell, a serial killer, though, who lays traps for people. He doesn't outright kill them. He tries to teach them lessons. Uh, is stricken with cancer. And it looks like there are no more treatments possible for him in the United States. So he finds out about a more uh, experimental treatment that other people claim has been effective for them. Um, but he has to travel to go do it. It is very expensive. And it's kind of a leap of faith on his part. You know, there's a there's a subtext to his life and what he's been doing and is currently doing as he's going through all this. But he stops that stuff. He takes the time to go attempt to do the special treatment. He gets there. The treat the he goes through the treatment, and it turns out that it's all snake oil. And uh, John Kramer, his real name, reverts to his uh, identity or. Um, persona of jigsaw to get his unique type of revenge on the people that have wronged him and so that's what the rest of the movie is now you learn all of that in the trailer i'm saying i'm talking about this in a particular way for a reason you learn about all this in the trailer but then when you go watch saw x you spend the first four, 35 to 45 minutes watching a very extended version of what i just told you Really, there's almost nothing else to it. There are hints about some of the other movies and little, 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 little teasers there. There's one trap that I have an issue with, but I want to explain it because there's, you know, again, no spoilers. There's one trap, but that was a good idea, but I had an issue with its use in the movie. And besides that, you're essentially watching a very, very, very extended version of the trailer. And that can be said to be true about a lot of movies. But a lot of movies make it a lot more interesting than Saw X does. Saw X is almost, it tries to be extremely sincere and what term am I looking for? Where you're just kind of, not melancholy, that doesn't seem like the right word, but just everything has so much gravity. It's like you're watching, what if Saw was made as an art, artsy movie or something, like an indie art film or something. The first 40, 45 minutes of it feel like that. Like they're trying to take themselves so seriously. And I kind of get what they were going for with that. But it's to me, at least, it was extremely dull. And I'm and I'm just I was shocked watching the first act of the movie, the first third or so. It's a little more than an act. It's like the first third or so. Uh, I was shocked by how slow it was moving and how little there was to the scenes. Because you can have a movie that the story moves slowly, but the scenes have a lot of depth to them. And there's a lot of subtext and you know you're kind of like kind of how some quentin tarantino movies are right where you're you're watching stuff and not a whole lot's really happening but you feel like there's a lot to take in saw x felt like it might have been trying to do that but for me it just i was just waiting for okay when's something going to happen i know it's going to happen when's that thing that you show me in the trailer going to happen and so that's what you do for the first 40 minutes is wait for john kramer to get screwed over because you know what's going to happen because it said it in the trailer and unless you come in this movie totally blind like you haven't seen a word about not even a teaser you know that's going to happen you know john kramer is going to get screwed over and then jigsaw is going to emerge 
Um, but that's what you're forced to wait for. Again, uh, you know, 35, 45 minutes. It seems like a long time. I'm not near to stopwatch. It seems like a really long time. I think I've beaten that 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 horse pretty badly. So let me move on. So that's the first the first part of the movie, and the movie's better understood. You know, they usually do a three act structure: first act, second act, third act. This movie's really better understood as two parts. The first part is like all the setup that really happens and leads up to a particular trap. Um, once you get to that, then the rest of the movie happens. And that's the thing. The rest of the movie is perhaps the best hour of Saw movie in the entire series. That, you know, you've got ex mostly excellent traps. There's one trap towards the end that was a little too familiar. In fact, two of them, although one of them didn't bother me because there was a lot of great subtext to that, to that trap. There's another trap that has to do with brains that we've already seen before. If you've seen other Saw movies, you've seen like the same trap. And so I wasn't particularly happy about that. But for the most part, the traps are good. The second to last trap, whatever that is, but the second to last one, again, no spoilers, is awesome. And the third act is perhaps the best third act in all the Saw movies. And this finally made me understand why Cody and Sean Chandler love Saw X as much as they did. Because that's the thing. When you make movies, you got to close the show. Saw X really closes the show well. It builds up. And when you get to the last 25 minutes of it, 30 minutes of it, it really takes a hold of you and does a great job of bringing it to a conclusion. And I had a little issue with the ending, but I thought it was pretty good. Not un perfectly understandable and consistent. Um, but it wasn't, you know, had a little, little, little issue with it. Anyway, so that's kind of my... That was how I experienced the, the Saw, X, Saw X. And there is an after credit scene, which you should stay for. It's cool. The other major issue with the first part of Saw X, the first 45 minutes or so, is one thing as an expectation for all the Saw movies, including Jigsaw, including Spiral, all the first nine movies, is that they have a lot going on. They're kind of visually aggressive um the story is moving fast you know that's what you kind of expect so i think that's part of what was so jarring about the first part of saw x is it's not that at all it's saw almost reimagined as not that movie as almost more like what is it though what are those movies with um charles bronson from the 70s like a straightforward kind of revenge movie except with traps you know in general part of the mystery of the saw movies would be why the people are in the traps like what got them there what was the purpose what what situation led them to being there oftentimes you would find them how they were captured or what they did to end up in the traps later on saw is almost saw x is almost rigorously in order of what happens there are i'm trying to think i don't think there are any flashbacks it's literally everything that happens in the order that it occurred in the story. And Saw usually is the opposite of that. It's playing with time. It's playing with who's doing what. There's, there's all kinds of little big and little mysteries all throughout Saw movies. This one doesn't do that. This one's like, I'm going to tell a direct, straightforward story. Maybe they thought we need to try to capture a bigger audience again. Maybe that's why they did that. So maybe that thought that was intimidating when people came into Saw movies and it was too much going on too fast. And just not do that. Let's be deliberate. I think that was a good term. Let's be deliberate. Walk through the first parts of the movie. Lay out everything purposefully, like all the dominoes, and then knock them down. And I think that for a Saw movie that's going to do that, they did a pretty good job. They still should have trimmed that first act a bit more. It's still gratuitously long-winded in terms of the scene lengths and how many different pieces to what's happening. It's like, then John Kramer did this. Then he did this. Then he took a car here. Then he opened these doors here. Then he met this person here. Then he had some tea with this person. Then he went and walked and checked out this area. Then he talked to this person. I mean, it's... I was flabbergasted. Like, what are they trying to accomplish with this? And I still don't completely understand... But I do understand the aspect of let's tell a deliberate, straightforward story named Saw instead of the kind of 
bouncing off the walls, fever fest that a lot of the other Saw movies have been, where you're telling me sometimes I might be having trouble keeping up with what's going on. And of course, any Saw movie, 10 that movies in featuring Jigsaw is going to alienate people that haven't seen the other nine movies. And so it's almost like a new entry point. And I think that's perfectly understandable. They just were a little bit too deliberate about the first act. So what do I grade this? It's so different than all the other Saw movies. It's hard to compare to any of them. You know, again, love the third act, liked parts of the second act, especially after the midpoint kind of of the movie. And once you get to there's a certain trap that kind of signifies to me the turning point of the movie that, okay, now it's the good movie, not the boring one anymore. Uh, but the first one's so hard to sit through and makes it very unlikely I'll probably ever watch it again. Whereas I've seen the other ones a bunch of times. This one, I may watch one more time in five to 10 years from now, but I'm not clamoring to buy a copy of it. Even though I have all the not other ones in my, in my collection, I'm not clamoring for a copy of it. Um, ultimately, I'm glad they made it though. I'm glad I saw it. So I think I'm gonna go with a six out of 10. So overall, a good experience, but not one I can recommend without the disclaimer that you're gonna have to be patient for the first third of it while it really lays the setup for the rest of the movie. But it actually is a decent entry point if you've never watched one or two. You could probably come in on one or two. After that, there's no entry point in the series except for, I guess, Spiral is its own thing, but I wouldn't recommend that for other reasons. Anyway, thanks for watching this review of Saw X by Low Key Classic Movies. Please like, consider subscribing, and stay tuned for more reviews and more live streams.